Okay. Hi. Is the sound okay? Okay, cool. So, um, I want to give a status update on Nouveau. Um, we kind of missed last year, so we are really sorry about that, but uh, luckily it worked out this year, even though we missed the, you know, CFP and everything. So, um, yeah, but yeah, let's just, well, let me just start. Um, that's still our goal. Like, um, I mean, we are sure we can't really promise performance expectation users might have from a normal open source OpenGL driver, but at least we, we, are, we are really trying hard to make it reliable. And we know that we have a lot of places where we still have a lot of issues, especially about reliability, but at least that, that's where we want to uh, be in the future. And um, hopefully we get there at some point. Um, so, but what actually happened since, you know, the last time we gave this uh, update and uh, I guess the most important feature for newer systems is that we finally support mode setting on Turing GPUs. Um, so if you have a recent GPU, there's a high chance that you can use your displays with the Nouveau driver. Um, I think it's still missing for really new GPUs, like some newer chipsets came in, uh, coming, which were pub or released some months ago or something. That might still be missing, but at least, you know, for most of the Turing GPUs, it should be fine now. Um, there was also some atomic mod setting support, which is um, essentially for user space. If, you know, if you want to change the resolution, but something happens, like the cable is not reliable or something, that the kernel can automatically detect certain problems with that and that you don't get to a state where you have a black screen. So uh, that's quite important. Um, I think there are a lot of X compositors which are buggy, so we don't kind of disable it on the kernel side, but hopefully we get there as well. And Loot was working on a lot of reverse prime improvements. Um, it was like, I, when I'm looking at this, like two years ago or something, there were a lot of issues with reverse prime, like the HMI audio was not working, or uh, the GPU wasn't powered on a, uh, anymore. So there were a lot of random failures. And Loot uh, did a good job to work on all of those, and get it to a state where I think we can say it's good enough now and there shouldn't be m uh, many issues left anyway. If you know of some, just, yes? Just a quick uh, question, what is reverse prime? Oh, reverse prime is system. if you have a little laptop mm -hmm. and usually your, dis uh, your desktop is rendered on the Intel GPU. Mm -hmm. But some of the laptops have external display ports like HDMI or display port via to the NVIDIA GPU. Ah, so, uh, like reverse prime is kind of the X uh, term for it. So you kind of have to display it on the NVIDIA GPU and sh like copy the buffers and all that kind of stuff. Or maybe I don't know how it's in detail, but yeah, that's kind of the thing. It's called Optimus. Too. Yeah, Optimus is the uh, marketing term for it, uh, tied to NVIDIA. I don't know how it's called on Radeon GPUs, but yeah, that's kind of the thing. Um, I was also working on having a near backend for Novo, so right now we can, to the, uh, compared to the old one where we use TGSI for the shader compilation, today we can also use near. It's still turned off by default, and uh, we, or at least I hope, we can turn it on by default uh, if it's reliable enough. I know that there are some regressions, but like supporting near is required, like not technically, but how we do stuff in MISA right now, it's kind of required for OpenCL, for Vulkan, and for OpenGL 4.6. 
And that's, I think, also one of the reasons why Red Eon SI moved to nearby default because it gives them the Spirit support, which is required for OpenGL 4.6. Um, it would be cool if people would start testing it, like running it with games or their normal desktop or something. And we have an environmental variable for that you can set and then nearest used. Um, for my testing I've done is I usually saw higher performance than with the TGSI path, but I didn't spend time on any kind of performance optimizations. So if you test it and you see, oh, that's, that one application is much slower than with the TGSI path, then I would be really interested in, interested in knowing about this. Um, right. And also updates on OpenCL. Uh, I was working on that quite a lot last year. Um, the initial support was merged quite recently. Um, and it's right now, I think, kind of supported on Fermi and newer. Um, I only really tested it on Pascal, so there might be a, a lot of issues on other chipsets as well. Um, I think Pierre is working on enabling it on Tesla as well, which is the generation before Fermi. And if somebody really, really wants to play around with that, we also have an environmental variable to enable it as well. Um, I'm sure that none of the applications work right now um, because uh, like the, shader, uh, the kernel compilation isn't really finished at this point. But if anybody's interested in it and thinks, yeah, maybe I want to do some OpenCL driver stuff, um, there's this nice OpenCL conformance test suite, which is <coughs> um, testing most of the OpenCL features. And <coughs> yeah, it's, uh, I would say it's much easier to fix those issues than, for example, jump into an OpenGL driver and figuring out what's wrong there. Mm. And because the runtime is much more, uh, it's way more simpler and it's r more easy to follow what's actually going on there. Um, I kind of called it staffing because, you know, as an open source project, we don't really do staffing, but I mean, we have a few paid developers. Um, besides myself, there's also Ben Skaggs working uh, for Red Hat on the Novo driver full time. And we also have, uh, for example, Lute, which is also part of the same team at, inside Red Hat, working a lot of uh, uh, fixing mostly display related Novo issues as well. Um, I'm also how do I phrase it, um, in the same team, but I can't really spend that much time on the actual issues I would like to work on. But, uh, I mean, it's still like Kate developers. And we also have an intern at Red Hat, which is right now working on the Novo Shader Cache, which um, kind of helps with especially loading times of games and so on. And I think we, we did some testing. We saw improve, uh, like speed ups of three to four times faster um, over like shadow compilation because we can skip a lot of that in this area. I don't know how, that, how much relevant it's for games or something, but I hope um, that at least some games needing like four or five minutes won't take as long. Yes? Nobody knew what NVIDIA working on a new book? I will come to that later. Okay. Huh? Um, oh, yeah, it was asked if there's anybody in NVIDIA working on Novo. Um, yeah. I will, Novo, uh, NVIDIA will be a topic for later. Um, yeah, so we have also community members working on a Novo driver. Uh, I think the most uh, present one is Ilya, which is doing a lot of, well, Maybe not a lot, but he is doing quite some um, OpenGL stuff. He is implementing some new extensions, um, fixing random issues. He's also working on some display-related stuff. But yeah, I mean, big thanks to him because he's been uh, like still working on the Novo drivers uh, driver. 
Um, what kind of Quite a few of developers, two or three years ago, most of them essentially moved on, either by being hired by other companies and working on other drivers now, or maybe just lost interest or something. Right? Which, which makes it really hard for us right now because we have a lot of issues to work on, or for example, also want to implement a Vulcan driver, but we really, really don't have time for anything big anymore, essentially. And um, I mean, there are random contributions from random developers doing some stuff, but it's never something where I would say, oh yeah, this really stands out, or there is this new guy putting a lot of work or a lot of time into it, so. Um, yeah, it would be nice if I could kind of get more people interested in, uh, into the project. I know that it's difficult to work with, and I know that a lot of people are kind of feared about doing hardware stuff. Um, but I, I think if one is interested enough, it, they are able to work on that. Kind of like for myself, before I actually started to work on Novo, I was a Java backend developer. So I really did something completely different. I had no experience in hardware programming at all. And I kind of just jumped into the project because I was thinking, yeah, I have this NVIDIA GPU and I really want to have an open source driver for that. And there are issues, so I just started to work on that. And, um, Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yes, Martin is right. There are a lot of low-hanging fruits. Uh, I have a slide later on where I kind of list some tasks people could work on. But, um, yeah, I, I, I want to talk about this later. Um, what's also interesting is, um, like, the working together with NVIDIA, um, negative stuff first. And I think that's the most annoying part, or most annoying thing for us right now is that getting firmware, because they, it has to be signed, otherwise the hardware doesn't execute it. Um, and we needed to kind of access some states on the GPU. We are not allowed with unsigned firmware. And it's required, for example, for OpenGL. And What's kind of set, or what we would like to have is that if new hardware is released, that we get on the same day the hard, uh, the firmware for using those GPUs. Um, I don't really have numbers on how long it takes in average, but I think we had a situation where it took around one and a half year for some generation, but might be less, might be more. I, I really didn't look it up, so I don't want to have make a concrete statement there. What's also annoying is, and it's true for power management as well, is we also need special firmware. Um, the, mo the most annoying thing is on the second generation on Maxwell, we could reclock the GPU and we know enough to do it, but what needs signed firmware is controlling the fans. So you can have much, uh, high speed, but the GPU would overheat because we can't spin, uh, make the fans faster. And that's annoying because, I mean, it's, we are so close, but we still can't do it. And it's even worse on newer generations where even bits of the reclocking itself, like changing the voltage, is uh, essentially locked unless you have signed firmware. And um, there were thoughts about doing the same we do also for the video acceleration, where you essentially extract it from the NVIDIA driver. But it's kind of 
really annoying because that would mean, yeah, distributions or users have to manually execute a script every time they install their distribution. And then it has to be extracted, and then we have to reverse engineer the interfaces, and those change essentially every driver version. So it would be super annoying and a uh, lot of work we also don't have time for. So, yeah. But there yeah, are also good things uh, in regards to NVIDIA is that overall, at least myself, I get the feeling that it's improving over time. It might be not that obvious to others because we also, like, um, uh, it's, I have to be a little bit careful of what I'm talking about because we have some partnership with NVIDIA from Retro perspective, so I... Um, so I know a little bit more, but I can't really tell about much, right? Um, but at least what we're working on with NVIDIA is um, getting doc uh, documentation out. And they actually have a Git repository on GitHub. And you can essentially see the commit history, and there is some useful stuff going in there, especially documentation for the displays, uh, interfaces, so what you know, how do we program the GPU to drive the display and uh, what we do, what, how to program the MMU as well, like for doing memory-related stuff. So that's super helpful, and I hope that there will be more useful documentation also for different areas, but we just have to wait and see what's happening there. Um, Terry is employed by NVIDIA, and he also works on Tegra code mostly. I mean, he's doing uh, upstreaming of a lot of Tegra bits for the core kernel, like just using the Tegra devices, and it's not really, not that much Novo related, but there's also some Novo contributions to um, fixing random issues or having this Tegra Gallium driver as well. Uh, so that's also cool. And um, it's really good to see that there's at least some people at NVIDIA really dedicated to this. Um, also, there is on the mailing list, if you scroll through it or search for people with an NVIDIA email address, there are some patches from NVIDIA people, so, which is also quite cool. And I hope there will be more in the future. So. Um, some stuff we are currently working on is um, the biggest thing, most likely, getting OpenGL 4.4 and 4.5 ready. There's this kind of requirement to pass the official Kronos conformance test suite. Um, I think on some GPUs we are at the stage where we pass every test. But there are random failures if you run the full thing, because the full thing does like, I don't know, 30 iterations of the test with different parameters. And last time I did this was like the first failure was after 10 hours of running it. And it's like super painful to debug. And it's a, probably some random issue of, you know, initial, not initialized memory or something random. We have no idea. And I'm also. I'm not really in the mood of having to wait for 10 hours to hit a bug to just to debug it. So um, that's a little bit annoying, but we are getting there. And Ilya was also fixing a lot of issues and myself as well. So hopefully soon as we get uh, official OpenGL 4.5 support. Um, we also would like to improve the performance. There are sometimes random shader optimizations landing in the tree. Um, for example, also the near work could lead to improved performance. Um, but sadly, we really can't you know, do really, really big reworks to improve the performance in a uh, way like the Intel guys or Radeon guys are doing, where they essentially use different interfaces of Visa or rework certain other areas. Um, <coughs> Building a CI system, we would also have something wired up to the free stop GitLab CI system. I don't know if any, like, if all of you heard about this, but right now we have a 
uh, CI pipeline on the Git repository whenever somebody opens an MR or uh, somebody pushes to the master branch that we have this software and hardware pipeline testing if commits regress something. So we do test the software vendors, but there are also instances really testing it on hardware. And I would kind of want to have the same for uh, Nouveau as well. Um, I kind of have to see like how much time it consumes because maintaining such a system can be very time consuming, but uh, let's see how that goes. Um, right, OpenCL support, um, it's also what we are still working on. And I hope I will be done with it soonish. There are a few shade uh, kernel compilation stuff we still have to figure out, um, but uh, yeah. And what we also right now uh, working on is getting getting OpenGL support for Vulture and Turing. Um, Vulture isn't really relevant to any users because I don't think anybody has this super expensive Vulture GPU, but it's kind of similar to Turing, so uh, it's essentially the same work. And once we get the firmware for hardware acceleration for those as well, we want to have this be done inside Mesa as well. So. People can uh, users can finally use OpenGL on Turing GPUs as well. <coughs> um, important things we really want to fix is, I think, the m most prominent issue is the runtime power management issue. Um, there are a lot of laptops where you have an <coughs> NVIDIA GPU, and when we turn it off, then it fails to turn on, and usually it leads to the system crashing or people not being able to boot the Linux installer and then they have to disable the runtime power management stuff. Um, what's kind of annoying about this issue is that I have no idea what's wrong there and um, nobody else was able to help as well. So. Uh, we were talk or I was talking ups with upstream developers about this issue and there was no real conclusion on that either. Um, we also have no idea if it's a driver bug inside Novo or maybe it's a hardware bug or maybe it's, um, it's a kernel bug. What's kind of interesting that it only happens with a certain Intel bridge controller and not with any else. So maybe it's a hardware bug but the, the biggest problem is just that the uh, firmware code involved with turning off the GPU is accessing undocumented registers, so we don't even know if what we are doing is even correct, or maybe we have to do some things before doing so, but there's also no public documentation on that, so that's super annoying to fix. This is coming up from uh, NVIDIA, some serious help. Uh, excuse me? Is some serious help in that direction? Um, so the question is if there's any help from NVIDIA from that direction. Um, kind of. Kind of. I can't, can't really. No, just with no real information. Yeah. No, there's not anything useful coming out. What I kind of hoped what would happen because the official NVIDIA driver mm. supports this on the latest driver for Turing GPUs as well. So they they have no support for turning off and on the GPU, yeah. but if we do it on Turing with Novo, it works. Yeah, so I can't really say, maybe, like, I would like to reverse engineer it with no. uh, older GPUs, but if the driver doesn't support it, I can't do it as well. And, I mean, we, or I tried to request information from NVIDIA on this, but they... Okay. Uh, I, I really don't know. I mean, I, I didn't get anything useful. Let's put it this way. But does a similar issue happen uh, if you do the hardware pass through the virtual machine for, to have KVM, for mm -hmm. example? So, uh, just comment or a question? Uh, does, does this similar issue, oh. does this mm -hmm. issue happen when you do that? Uh, 
So the question kind of was that a similar thing happens with device password as well, and if um, like it's kind of related or not, um, now it's a different thing. I mean, it's totally unrelated. Um, the runtime power management is usually something which is only implemented in laptop firmware. So it's really a firmware level feature of cutting the power on the PCIe device. Uh, I, I, I'm aware of a few issues with device pass through. Yeah, but um, no, it's a different thing. Um, what might also be relevant in the future is that right now devices are not hot unpluggable. Um, this is mostly relevant for eGPU cases where users have their case and they are unplugging the device and then the kernel just crashes right now. So I noticed that on a few generations it doesn't crash, but user space is still screwed up. Um, the most annoying, like, it's, it's one of the bigger rework we would like to do because it essentially touches all of the driver because at any point the device can just vanish and you kind of have to deal with it in a kernel driver. And there, you know, kernel drivers for GPUs are quite huge. And uh, if you have this assumption that, like if you, if you lose the assumption of, yes, my device is always there, a lot of things you can't really rely on anymore. Because right now, if there is, uh, if you want to access device memory, we just do it, right? There's no check for, is the device still there or not? Um, so yeah, that's it's a little bit bigger rework, but uh, if somebody is interested on in fixing this, that uh, the biggest advantage is that there's no hardware knowledge required at all. I mean, it's essentially just you know unplugging it, and you see this kernel crash, and then you try to figure out how to fix it. Uh, it's kind of straightforward, but it's a lot of work. So. Um, so what we also really would like to fix in user space or work on is uh, multi-threading. That's uh, mostly an issue, issue which comes up with Chromium, for example, because they're doing multiple context, uh, OpenGL context in the same, like, is different. Is the reason that the Google turned it off, hardware acceleration? If I run Chrome or yeah. Chromium, on Nouveau, there's no hardware acceleration. Yes. Uh, so, um, if you turn it on, I get problems on various yeah, yeah. websites. Um, that's, that's what you mentioned that, that's, now. That's one of the reasons. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there are also other reliability issues because like rendering, rendering can fail or um, there can be random corruptions. But I think what really drove the decision from Google was that the multi-threading thing really causes the GPU to just, you know, yeah. or the application to just crash. And uh, what's also happening is there are a lot of Chromium-based applications which also have to maintain their own blacklist, I think. So there are other applications having the same issue and essentially just crashing. There are also a few games, I think, uh, doing multi-threaded rendering or OpenGL and um, Kind of the core issue is that we just corrupt the application state or the Mesa state as well. So we send invalid commands to the GPU, and then the GPU might also just crash. Uh, yeah, and sometimes the Mesa just crashes, so uh, it's really annoying. But yeah, we would like to work on uh, or fix that. Um, we also would like to have a Vulkan driver. Um, I think right now the main reason why we can't do that is because we would like to have a new kernel interface for the Novo drive in order to properly implement Vulkan as well, which also would require us to rework the Mesa driver at some point as well, but it would lead to a more reliable driver. Um, context recovery is also kind of something a lot of drivers are implementing as well is that even the, like sometimes it can happen that the GPU context or the GPU just crashes. And we would like to recover from that. Um, in the past, what I have saw and some users as well is that it could happen that the GPU context crashes, user space never knows about this and X just freezes. Uh, so the user is not able to do anything. They can't even switch to the TTY. 
in order to restart X or something, so they just have their machine, nothing happens anymore, and they have to essentially force reboot. Um, there are some improvements with that, with the 5.6 kernel, and hopefully most applications will now just crash if that happens. But if anybody of you have this case with the updated kernel that, or you still have a freeze and your system just doesn't do anything anymore, then just contact us and we will see uh, like what's the reason for this. But hopefully that doesn't happen anymore. Um, question? Do you have any kind of guesstimate of how many years away uh, like a reliable Qualcomm driver would be? So the question was how many years are we away from a, a reliable Vulcan driver? Um, I don't know. I mean, Vulcan driver is usually less work than an OpenGL driver, but there are also a lot of additions to Vulcan <coughs> happening. So um, I really don't know. I mean, hopefully it's not that far away. Um, Combined f uh, forces together with Intel oh. and AMD that also want a Vulcan yeah. driver. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> yes, but we are, are already having shared stuff yeah. with Intel and AMD on the Visa driver. So there are a lot, uh, there are some common things, uh, especially the Spurvy uh, compiler stuff because Vulkan requires Spurvy and we have the Spurvy to near um, thing inside Misa which is shared by all the Vulkan drivers. So at least in this area we have can just make use of what's already there. Um, there's also like dispatching stuff, like if you call a f Vulkan function, then it, like the runtime has to check, oh, is, does it actually, is implemented by the driver or not? So there are also shared code in this area. Um, I think there are other bits as well. But yeah, I mean, there is stuff like this. And I think the main goal is to get to a point where drivers really only have to implement their hardware-specific bits. Uh, bits. Yeah. <clears throat> um, what we also would like to work on is uh, mainly debugging features. Um, right now, if we encounter a bug, it's usually um, always a lot of work to figure out what's actually happening there. Uh, for example, we can't debug a shader, which is super annoying, so we can't see, oh, what's the value of this register, or why did this shader loop forever, or something. Um, it's really painful to debug right now the such issues because it usually means, oh yeah, I have to adjust the GLSL code to figure out oh, why does something happen. That usually takes more time than, for example, let's say just turn on a debugger and see what the shader is doing. So we can't do that. We would like to do that. Um, there was some reverse engineering in this direction done already like a lot of years ago, but um, yeah, it's not implemented yet. Um, so, and if anybody is interested to help us out on that, um, and has essentially NVIDIA GPUs and has these issues or something, it's always a good idea to try to look into that themselves. Um, I mean, that's how I started to, uh, to work on Novo. I just had random, or I had issues related to reclocking, and I was looking into it and figure out like, what's wrong. Uh, and if there are some issues which really annoys you and you would like to get it fixed, you could also, uh, you could try to look into this as well. We can always help with stuff, so if, uh, like, yeah, if, if you're interested, just try to do this, please. Um, being interested and motivated also is kind of uh, a huge thing, of course. If you are not motivated, then nothing will come out of it. Um, and especially for uh, students, if they also want to get some money while doing that, um, we would be happy to do also GSOC or EVOC uh, programs, which is essentially kind of, you get money to work on open source project as an intern, like kind of intern life. I mean, can't really say it it's not an internship, but it's essentially um, 
you ha uh, there is some evaluation going on and we say, okay, this person is skilled enough to work on that and then they get paid for, I think, GSOC is three months. I don't know the details of eWork, but yeah, so there's money and you're working on open source projects. Um, what's also kind of good entry level task is uh, compiler optimizations. Uh, most of you, or some of you might have think, oh, but that sounds super complicated, but uh, a lot of optimizations are just simple math. So you have, you know, uh, special patterns and shaders which you can reduce to a uh, simpler set of instructions just by applying some math to it, essentially. Um, there are also like more complicated compiler optimizations, but that's kind of the uh, more trivial ones where you just see, oh, maybe there's a shift in the left direction and in the right direction. Maybe I can also just apply an end if it's by the same uh, amount of bits. So, um, what's also kind of a fun project would be to use some GPU, GPIOs. There are several of them on NVIDIA GPUs. Some of them just control the LEDs on GPUs, for example. Uh, some of them get triggered when you don't have the external power connected to the GPU. And there are a lot of random stuff like this. Um, maybe if some is more keen to work on hardware level stuff, um, that's also something cool to work on. And uh, we also have some fan controlling issues where we actually got documentation for as well. And it's still like a thing on our to-do list, but if somebody else has a GPU where the fan controlling is really odd, like, uh, if you have more load, the fans could get slower. Uh, I have a GPU like that myself as well, um, which is something which shouldn't happen. But uh, if you find such uh, odd issues with your GPU as well, maybe if you want to look into it, that would be also be a cool thing to look into. Yeah. I think I'm done. Um, there are a few links uh, you can always look into as well. Mostly we are on the IRC channel around and talking with users if they have uh, complaints or bugs or something. And we also have the Trello board where a lot of tasks are listed. Maybe I can open it. Oh, you get to, uh, oh, yeah. Um, but I think that's essentially it. Yeah, so I don't have anything anymore. Uh, any questions or comments or maybe even suggestions? It might be good to have the Trello board linked on the development page because I don't think it is. Uh, uh, I thought it's I on the wiki. Yeah, I'm sure it's there, but if it's not, then yeah. Do you need to support the Quattro branded uh, GPUs specifically compared to GeForce, or is it just a matter of generations? Um, mm -hmm. mm. The question was if we have to do anything special for Quattro GPUs. Um, no, we don't. It's essentially the same GPU. I think there are some Quattro cards which have certain hardware features enabled, like um, double floating point precision performance. Um, usually on GeForce cards, you have really slow double precision performance, but it doesn't matter because games are not using it. Um, but besides that, I'm not really aware of anything. Uh, I, I mean, there was what I was actually working on is that in the past, if you used the NVIDIA driver only on Quattro cards, you got the power consumption. And I've implemented it for GeForce cards as well, for Innovo. Because it was just really a software check to turn it on or, or off in the NVIDIA stack. No. But yeah, generally it's the same. Yes?
Yeah. Uh, so the question was what OpenCL version we are targeting. Um, right now, the OpenCL runtime in MISA is implemented on a 1.1 level. And at least that's what we are trying to match. But I was also working on some OpenCL 2.0 features. Or Pierre was also working on consuming SPIRV, which is an OpenCL 2.1 feature. So, um, yeah, I mean, there are interested features in OpenCL 1, which are cool to implement. But yeah, I mean, right now we are trying to get it to work first and then look into implementing more features. Yeah. Yes? Uh, how about uh, legacy products for generation of uh, Giga hardware? I, I have a more kind of low profile, uh, for example, the sun is really noisy. Uh -huh. And it's hot. So uh, I'd like, but um, I never managed to uh, docker. It's a, still a uh, development for uh, those old cars. So the question was is if there's still development for old cards. Um, yes, if somebody has time to look into it. Yeah? So, uh, I mean, the kind of the bad and the good thing is uh, we are not a company, so we can just take care of issues on older hardware because we don't have the pressure on only supporting the newest thing because we want to sell hardware. But on the other hand, we also don't have enough people to look into all the issues. Um, if there is a bug on uh, like 10 years old GPU and somebody fixes it, then we also would like to merge it. Yes. Yes. So I saw that you have some paid call developers. Mm -hmm. uh, who pays for this work and, and why? What is the interest of this? So um, Reddit is paying for all of them. And the reason for doing so is just because of RHEL. Well, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And I mean, it supports a desktop, and because you want to make use of the GPU as well, you need the Novo driver, because um, Red Hat doesn't want to ship any proprietary blobs, so Novo is the only thing. Um, the question was if uh, using the firmware provided from NVIDIA causes additional work. Um, yes, the firmware is executed on coprocessors on the GPU, and you also need a communication channel to this chips as well, uh, to the CPUs as well. So um, that's one thing we have to work on. Also, the signature stuff, like because they are signed, requires a booting process which gets more complicated by the generation. So you have like a core security chip which has to get booted, and then it boots the other processors with other firmware, and the signature stuff is different again, and you have to allocate secure memory so you, the driver can tamper with it while the boot process is ongoing and stuff like that. Yeah, so that's kind of the thing, which the, the uh, positive advantage, like the advantage of doing the, uh, getting the firmware is we don't have to implement the firmware ourselves. That's what we've done on older generations where we have uh, the firmware for power management, uh, especially useful for on Tesla and Kepler because we do the memory reclocking on the PMU, which is one of the coprocessors, but we also have um, firmware for context switching. So if you have multiple uh, hardware contacts on a GPU, they have to get switched at some point, and on NVIDIA GPU, that's also done on those coprocessors. Yes? I mean, yeah, the question is if now that Red Hat got bought by IBM, if they are able to put more money into it, I mean, they certainly could because it's a 
bigger company with more money than the Red Hat, but um, even if I would know about plants, I wouldn't be allowed to talk about it. Right? So, um, yeah, I mean, the most obvious thing is, yes, they could because they have more money. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yes? When you talk about the debugging, you mentioned that uh, yeah, there is probably some memory corruption going on. So is it possible to have an address sanitizer or something like that to, mm. to build a kind of, kind of module? No, um, the question was that because I was talking about debugging, if there if there's memory corruptions, why we can't use like address sanitizer. Um, I was talking about GPU debugging. Yeah, like uh, all the sanitizers don't work with GPU memory. Uh, uh, so yeah. So yes, I mean, for example, the multi-threading issues we can fix with the address sanitizer. Um, the, the problem is just that the cause is much more complicated than just throwing in some logs. Because if you throw in too many logs, then the performance goes down. So there's no benefit of doing multi-threading. No? Sure, we could, but also kind of the architecture of how we're doing things make it really annoying to do so. Yeah. Is it at least possible to make a log of what's driven <coughs> into the GPU and then when it dies, have at least a, a backtrack of what happened before? Um, so not you cannot read state anymore when it crashed, but they, then you can at least see what was the last thing that happened before so, it stopped responding. So the question was... Slow down things, of course, but... Uh, so the question was if, there, if we could throw in a log so we know what's happened last on the GPU before it crashed. Um, yes, we have that. With 5.6, Ben added a feature where... I don't even know. No, it's a kernel say, uh, feature where if you send commands to the GPU, you can do it in a synchronous way, and if the GPU crashes, we know what command submission was done last. It helps a bit, but a command submission can also be like 100 or 1,000 yeah, comments. Yeah. Yeah? But yeah, I mean, we could also do the command submission yeah. smaller than, and then figuring out what's happened. So yeah, we have something like this now, yeah. Okay. Okay, then I think I'm done. Okay.